Hi, everyone. Welcome to our second five minute recap. This conference style was a 20 question conference, meaning that the residents had 20 questions to arrive at a diagnosis. It took them only 17 to come up with the diagnosis of aspergilloma. Very impressive. And so to begin, we presented a 24 year old male with shortness of breath and fatigue and appropriately asking questions related to this complaint, the residents discovered that the patient was from Puerto Rico, had a history of respiratory disease and had a lung surgery as a baby, the details of which he cannot further recall. And his inhalational social history was fairly negative. Um, he was a former smoker, but quit that, and then was a daily marijuana user, quit five months ago due to his respiratory complaints, but his symptoms did not improve. His labs, including CBC, BMP, and LFTs, were all unremarkable. And so the residents then wanted to see some test imaging given the patient's complaints of shortness of breath and cough. Most notably, there is a left-sided infiltrate as that can be seen on this chest X-ray. It can also be seen on the lateral view. And the read was that there was a consolidation, possibly pneumonia to clinically correlate. Then to obtain more advanced imaging to further distinguish what this infiltrate was, on a CT scan, one saw a cavitary lesion. And I will run through that here with dependent material in the cavity. The read also additionally supported diagnoses including bronchiectasis and some fibrosis as well as subtle central lobular nodules in addition to this large cavity. So with the information of a cavitary lesion, the residents appropriately wanted to obtain some respiratory cultures and um, AFB, all of which was negative and nothing had grown. The patient was HIV negative. And so in thinking along the lines of what else can cause a cavitary lesion, they appropriately took the next step of ordering various fungal serologies as fungal infections can present in this manner with cavitary lesions. Um, both histo and blasto labs were negative. Um, and then ultimately it was discovered that uh, a sub-segment of aspergillus antibodies was positive to a specific species, leading us to a final diagnosis of an aspergilloma. So let's talk a little bit about the spectrum of aspergillus disease. Aspergillus can cause many varieties of disease. And so here's how they break down. In normal subjects with healthy immune systems, there is typically no disease, there may be colonization, but again, there are no symptoms. For patients that have uh, cavitary lung diseases or things like bronchiectasis and other structural lung diseases, they tend to get an aspergilloma. Patients with other chronic lung diseases like COPD, transplant, other respiratory tract infections and sarcoidosis often get a chronic pulmonary aspergillosis or CPA. Both aspergilloma and CPA are on a spectrum. Aspergilloma is just a more organized version of CPA. Then as your immunity worsens and you're an immunocompromised host on prolonged steroids, cirrhosis, and uh, transplant by which you may be on immunosuppressing medications, these patients tend to get invasive pulmonary aspergillosis. The difference between these above entities and invasive pulmonary aspergillosis is that the aspergillus hyphae are present in the lung tissue, as opposed to in these diseases, they are localized in the alveolar sphere. Finally, patients that have asthma, or cystic fibrosis and a peripheral eosinophilic count greater than 500 with specific image findings are considered to have allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis or ABPA. And so this image is really to recognize that these entities of aspergillus illnesses are all different and the aspergilloma does not equal ABPA. I've also listed the treatments here. Most Therapies are related to azoles with voriconazole as the medication of choice if the patient is allergic to an azole or um, the aspergillus species is resistant to it. Uh, echinocondins like caspofungin and mycofungin have been used 
and then ultimately amfotericin B can also be used though in patients with IPA and patients in the ICU, they often have kidney damage and so amfotericin B is less desired. Finally, the treatment for ABPA does differ given that this is an allergic entity and is typically used and glucocorticoids are typically used for treatment here. If the patient is having recurrent ABPA flares, they can sometimes be treated with an azole to decrease the burden of aspergillus and to decrease the uh, immunogenicity of those spores in their lungs. There's an excellent uh, summary of the spectrum of aspergillus disease um, with a QR code linked to that here. And thanks for watching. Hope you found this conference to be helpful.